All right, we got this top ready for our second coat. It's cured uh, for a day. Uh, we did our first decorative uh, color coat. Um, we've got this top all done now. Now, why am I going to do a second flood coat of stone coat? Well, the reason that we do it is because inevitably in your first coat, sometimes you'll have a little bit roughness on the edges. You might have a little dip here and there because the isopropyl alcohol might have created a little crater. Um, you might have different reasons why there's not a, it's not a perfectly flat surface. So when we're doing these for customers and we want the best possible finish that we could hope for, we will actually um, sand the top and do just a clear coat. We won't add spray paint, we won't add metallics, we won't add anything into the clear and just do a flood coat of clear. We also do this on our slab wood tables. The reason that we do that is because we want it to lay perfectly flat. Um, so what do I use? This is 220 grit sandpaper here and this is a maroon Scotch-Brite pad. Both of them work but the 220 grit sandpaper is a little bit more aggressive on the edges. You'll notice on the MDF <clears throat> when you are putting your base color down, rolling your paint on, you will want to do a couple of coats and sand those um, in between um, and then also before you do your flood coat so that they're smooth. You don't want a rough edge to start. But even that being said, the stone coat likes to penetrate into what it's uh, grabbing onto. And so sometimes it's a little bit rough on the edges. So here's what we do. Just take a piece of sandpaper and just quickly sand those edges until you don't feel those sharp nibs. And I don't feel a lot of them on here, but I will go ahead and do it just to where it feels nice and smooth. Do those edges. And then the top, I will typically do the top with my random orbital sander, but uh, you don't need to. You can also just do it by hand. So you can take that 220, and I see like this grain is kind of going this way, so I just automatically sand with that grain. And I see a little dimple right here to where the isopropyl alcohol created a little dimple. Just sand inside that dimple. And the way to get rid of those dimples when you're pouring is to look for those ahead of time and pour a little bit of clear into them and let it level out, torch it. Uh, I don't worry about them that much because I know that I'm doing a second coat. But on your first coat, because you're mixing all kinds of different stuff with the stone coat, sometimes you'll get craters and stuff like that. But the, the second flood coat definitely is a step up for your look. It makes it look just really really professional and uh, and then uh, down the road if you ever want to refinish the tops you can easily polish them sand them knowing you're not going to ever touch the color uh, here's here's just that 220 grit or that maroon scotch bright pad so I'm just going over it with that too I'm just going right over the edge with that and the flood coat will hide all of the uh, sanding marks um, so don't worry about your sanding marks, they get, they get hidden as soon as you touch it with another flood coat, it, it, it looks great. So there we go. That's all you got to do to prep the top for your, uh, for your next flood coat, but you're going to want to take some, uh, some rags and wipe the dust off, so I'll show you how to do that. So you can take tack cloth, um, many times I'll just use these blue shop paper towels and you can just wipe the dust, you can see the dust on there, you want to get that off. In my shop, I'll blow it off with the uh, air. Whenever you pour your second flood coat, you want to make sure it's nice and warm, just like your first. You want the um, ambient temperature about between 65 and 75 degrees. So you can see I got all that dust off. It's really clean on my rag. And now I'm ready to uh, do my second flood coat. So I'll mix that up, one to one ratio. 
Use my notch trowel, chop it out, and uh, torch it, and we'll be good. This coat goes much faster because you're not putting decoration in it. It just uh, just looks um, how uh, just just to clear, so you don't need decoration into it. Um, so it goes fast. Okay, okay, I got the stone coat all mixed up to a one to one ratio. Uh, if you need to learn how to mix the stone coat, go watch our mixing video. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a big bead of it, a big mass of material, right in the center of the countertop. So here we go. I'll pour that out. I'm going to pour out what I think I'm going to need. And plus maybe a little bit more so I could scoop it back out. So that's going to be more than what I need right there. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my square notch trowel, 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel. You can see I've used this thing a ton, but I always lay it down to where the drips go away from the teeth. And now I'm just going to spread the material. Make sure your top is very level. Um, I, I go ahead and level all these before I pour, so make sure it's, it's level. And now I'm just going to spread this out. You want to make sure you mix that, that mass of material together, just like I'm doing here with that notch trowel. And that just ensures that the material is totally mixed well. If you do this, you will not have problems with sticky spots and things like that. So that's why I mix it not only in the bucket with a whip, with a little drill, is I will mix it on the surface with the notch trowel, and then I'll come back and chop the material to get rid of any of these trowel marks that may be just very, very lightly noticeable. So I'll chop the material, and then we'll torch the material. So it's actually a really simple process. Just follow those steps and you'll have really good success. Sorry about my body being in the way here of the shot. You can see I'm just mixing this around, coming right up to the edge. I don't quite get it over the edge just yet. I like to put a little bead of material right to the edge, just like I do before I put color into it. And then I'll go, go and brush the edges and that kind of thing. So I'm just getting the material spread to where I have an even coat. And then I'll take the excess material off the top. Because I have, still have a lot of excess right here in the center. You can see how much is sitting there and that's just fine. Now all those sanding marks, as soon as you re-wet this top with the stone coat, those sanding marks just completely disappear. You will not see those. But the sanding helps it bond to that first coat. When you're doing like your seal coats and just real thin coats and you want to do multiple coats in one day and you go on top of it, when it's still tacky, that's just fine. You don't need to sand. But when it's not tacky anymore, you need to sand with uh, 220 grit sandpaper. Okay. So I'm just about got around this top. I'm going to come out front there and then uh, get a bead on the front. And then I'll show you what I do. Okay, I'm just going to let this bead roll right over that front edge. And that's what I'm doing with the trowel here. It takes a little practice, but it's a very simple, uh, simple technique. I just grabbed a little bit more material, going right over that edge. If you're doing this in the house, make sure you mask off your cabinets really well. Okay, so now I got a, a bead going over the edge and I got a lot of excess material. So I'm going to mow the lawn. I'm basically going to push this material back to the end. And I'm just going to make sure and do one more um, trowel stroke through the entire top on, on the whole thing. You don't want to push really hard and pull the material off. All you're doing here is just putting, making sure that the whole thing is coated. So I'm just going to go back and forth and I'm going to put my trowel at an angle to push the material back to the front of the top here. So I'm pushing the material right to you guys on the camera and putting one more final coat on this just to make sure I don't have some big uh, slump of material. And then I'll bring all the material together and scoop off the excess. So I'll bring the material here and I'm going to scoop the excess right into the bucket here. And that way I'm not wasting material that I don't 
um, need to, and I can use this on my other tops that I have ready to go. So I'll take it here, turn the trowel, and I fall right in the bucket. Boom, turn the trowel, and it'll go right into the bucket. Okay, so that top is now coated and clear. What's the next step? Let's do that right now. So the next step is I got my, my little brush. These are a one-time use brush that I get. So, uh, I pull the excess bristles off. Make sure you're not having a bunch of loose bristles. And I actually like to prime the brush first. So I'll take and I'll dip the brush into a little bit of material so that I have some material on the brush so that when I start doing the edges, I'm not um, removing it off the edges, I'm just spreading it around. So you want to go ahead, because you're going to have a bunch of drip marks on those front edges, so go ahead and brush out those front edges. Brush them out. You're going to brush them out a couple of times. I'm taking a little bit of excess, get it a little bit more wet on my brush. Brush those edges all the way up. Sorry about the phone ringing. Okay. There we go. So I got the front edges brushed. Now I'm going to chop the material. I'm actually going to prime the brush with a little bit of material. Start chopping it. I'm not pushing hard here. Especially in the beginning where the brush might be a little dry because you don't want to pick material up and not put it back down. So all the only purpose of doing this is so that there's a random pattern in there that gets rid of any iridescent look of the trowel which you probably won't have anyways, but this is just ensuring that it, it will not show up lines from your trowel. Also, this helps mix the material again. So this is our third time mixing that material. This system will prevent you from getting uh, a top that doesn't cure properly. So follow these steps and you'll have success. You can see all the little bubbles in the surface. That's normal at this point. We're going to torch those out. You don't need to torch them right away. You can do this. Now, because I chopped all the way to the edges, I've created more drips going over the edges. So go back and hit those edges again. This time it's much easier. There's not a bunch of drip marks and they're all coated. So the brush just really slides easy on those edges. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to torch this. So when you torch, you got all these little bubbles here. And I like to torch it two or three times, but initially I'm just popping the bubbles. Don't hold the torch on there too long because you'll burn it. Uh, you want to keep it going, keep the torch moving. So immediately when you hit it with the torch, the bubbles will pop. That's why it's okay to mix with the drill when you're doing such a thin coat. Because all the air that you're trapping in the material when you mix, this pops it right out. sit and I'll come back and retorch it. I'm just going to brush these edges one more time just to make sure they're coated evenly. Okay, it's laying out really good. Okay, now that first torch has set for about 10 minutes. 
Now I'm going to torch this again, and it's our, you can't see any air bubbles at all, but I'm going to torch it again just to, just to make sure it, 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 it gets rid of any air left in there. See, I'm going fast over the surface. There you go. Now I'll let this sit maybe another five, ten minutes. Do that one more time and you're good to go. That's how you do a clear flood coat with stone coat countertops. Please visit our website at stonecoatcountertops.com and check out our products. And you can do this too in your own kitchen or you could add this to your business. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please like the video, share your comments with us and enjoy the adventure of stone coat countertops.